Hello folks. One of my frequently asked questions lately has been what do I think of this new electronic zen thing? As some of you know, uh, we've been forced into it by circumstances and we're following circumstances. So you can join all of the Angel City Zen Center's Zoom meetings if you want to, and I will leave the links below as I've been doing for the past two weeks. And anybody, anywhere is welcome to join. You don't have to write in and ask for permission or anything like that. And people are asking me, well, what do I think about this whole thing? And I have to tell you, I'm not the biggest fan in the world. I think it's fine for now because it's about the only way you're going to be able to meet anybody and do zazen with people but as a general rule if there is any other option i would take you know just about any other option than trying to do it electronically and there's a few reasons for that let me see if i can try to explain my thinking here one of the things I often think about when it comes to electronically delivered Zen meetings is that I probably would have missed out on both of my Zen teachers, both Tim McCarthy and Gudo Nishijima, if an electronic method of meeting Zen people had been available at the time that I met them. Uh, Tim, I probably wouldn't have found because it wouldn't have even occurred to me to guess that there was a Zen teacher in Kent, Ohio in 1983 or 84, whenever I met him. It, I just, I probably wouldn't have even bothered looking because I would have just assumed nobody existed. In the case of Gudo Nishijima Roshi, uh, I've mentioned this before, but for the first year, maybe two years, maybe three years, I'm not even sure, of my study with Nishijima Roshi, I kept thinking, well, I'll stick with this guy until I find somebody better. And it took me a long time to finally figure out that the somebody better I was looking for was the guy I was sitting right in front of every Saturday at, at noon or whenever those, I think it was 1 p.m. anyway. Every Saturday I was sitting and li listening to the, to the best Zen teacher in the world. And I didn't uh, realize it for the first few you know, while. I don't know how long it was. And that's really one of the main things that informs my opinion on all of this. A couple of things I've noticed in our Zoom things that we've been doing for the past month or so, or maybe two months, I don't know, for a while, is we're getting a lot of people from all over the world. There's people coming in from England, from Germany. A guy uh, came in from Hong Kong the other day. Uh, some people from other parts of the U.S., like uh, there were some people from Nashville the other night. And it's great. I, I, I love having you there. Thank you for coming. So don't take anything that I'm going to say from now on as any sort of a diss against you guys coming from far away. But what I've also noticed is that the number of people at our Zoom things uh, compared to the number of people who were coming when we were doing it live in person, the average number has not changed, which says to me that the, the local people aren't coming anymore. <laughs> you know, well, some of them obviously are because I can recognize faces and names when I see them come up on the screen. But, you know, a lot of these people are, who, who did show up before in person aren't showing up so you know what I don't know what to think maybe they're just not doing Zen at all or maybe they've done what I expect a lot of people would do when things become electronic is they're gonna see this whole vast world of possibilities and go I wanna have my favorite you know so they they go for the famous people they'll go for Joan Halifax or uh, Reb Anderson or me <laughs> you know, instead of somebody local. So so all these non-local people are coming who, who like me, and thank you for coming. Don't take anything I'm saying as a diss against you. And the 
so I imagine there was probably people who used to come to Angel City Zen Center who were like, well, I like Joan Halifax better, so I'm going to Skype into or Zoom in or whatever in to the to the Joan Halifax show instead of the instead of that stupid Brad Warner show. And I really think that there is something to a, a thing that's local and a thing that is orally transmitted. And by orally transmitted, I mean in person. I, I, I'm not sure it's exactly the same thing. I, I think it's close-ish when it's coming through a computer screen, but it's not quite the same thing. And the, the sort of karma that brought me and Tim McCarthy into the same town at the same time, or brought me and Gudo Nishijima into the same town in the same time, that is important. That's not a trivial thing, and that that has something to do with why we meshed, and you don't always instantly recognize it, or at least I didn't always instantly recognize it, and I suspect that a lot of people don't instantly recognize who their actual true teacher is. Now, of course, there is the problem of people who have no access at all to any sort of Zen thing, and, and if they can come to it electronically, well, that's better than nothing. But again, I have to point out that if you'd asked me in 1983 or 84, is there a Zen teacher in Kent, Ohio, I would have just laughed, because obviously there's no Zen teacher in Kent, Ohio. Well, there was, and I would have missed him completely if, uh, if I'd just kind of thought it through or even looked through the yellow pages or something, you know, I, I don't think I, I could have found it. The in-person thing, though, th this is something real significant. And that book I've been reading, Commentaries on the Song of Awakening by Kodo Sawaki, Sawaki Roshi talks about this a lot, about how it's a person-to-person -person thing and you can't get it from books. Now, in the time that, that he delivered the lectures that became that book, or maybe, I'm not sure if he wrote it or if he just, if these are transcripts of lectures, but anyway, at that time, there was no possibility. Uh, nobody would have even envisioned the possibility of doing it on the internet, you know. Kind of funny thing, a little aside for you there, as a science fiction fan, one of the great anomalies of science fiction is that for all the predictions that people made about the future in science fiction from the 50s until, let's say, the 80s, um, almost no one predicted the internet. You know, maybe in the 80s a few people predicted it because you could kind of see it coming down the pike, but uh, in the 70s, you know, by the 70s, nobody had predicted it. So there you go. So when people try to predict the future, as a lot of people are trying to do these days with the whole pandemic business, well, take that with a grain of salt because nobody can really predict the future and people often get, always get it wrong. <laughs> I would say always get it wrong. Anyway, uh, so, so nobody would have envisioned that you could do it this way. So he's comparing it to books or to radio. Uh, people were already doing Zen talks on the radio. Of course, there was no interactive dimension to uh, doing it by the radio or by television or something like that. And now there is. But it's not quite the same. You know, when I'm doing this, uh, and it's probably the same experience for you folks out there when you're coming in on the Zoom, I'm just looking at this computer screen, same one that I'm looking at when I'm doing these videos, and I'm seeing little boxes, and I'm seeing little tiny faces like this big, you know, and I can't tell which one is talking because there's no sort of stereo spread or anything, so I just hear a voice and then I got to figure out which face is talking. I guess I could put it on another view and other than gallery view, but whatever. And and I don't get a sense of who that person is because they're they're removed from me. They're they're far away and it, it's difficult to establish any sort of a relationship. I don't get all that other stuff. I don't get the smell you know, they could be coming in with no pants on for all I know, because all I see is the head and shoulders. It's, it's a very different sort of experience than a face-to-face -face experience. So I hope that when this is all over and we can open up and we can start hanging out with people again, if that ever happens, I really do think that's going to happen eventually and, and probably sooner than we imagine. And I'm not talking about Trump's plan to open the economy. I just, I just, have this feeling, so you know, take take that for whatever it's worth. But I, I think that we really should try to get back to in-person 
meetings for, for Zen purposes uh, rather than doing it electronically. So uh, I, I really prefer that. As for us, as for Angel City Zen Center, I've talked to Dave about it because he knows more about technology than I do. And we're going to see if we can continue to offer a, a sort of a Zoom or Skype or whatever it turns out to be version of our weekly meetings when everything opens up and we can have actual weekly meetings again. But I think what that will be will be we'll add the Zoom people to the existing in-person meetings. That's kind of what I'm thinking right now, rather than continuing a Zoom only sort of sangha, because I'm not that, you know, I don't, mm, I'm dubious about the whole thing, even having experienced it quite a bit. There, it, it's not the worst thing in the world. I, I'd rather people come and do a Zoom Zen meeting than not do anything at all. Because there is a chance that something like a sangha can develop through these electronic means, but it's really, it's a, it's a poor substitute for an in-person thing, and it's, it's the kind of thing you resort to when you have to, uh, and not the kind of thing that one would prefer. And again, I, I, I think all these things that are, they've been around for years, these electronic sanghas, and I really worry that they are pulling people away from real sanghas where their connection, the real connection between people would be much stronger, you know, if, if they did that. Because for sure, a lot of people are shut-ins, can't, can't get to a place, they live in Nome, Alaska or somewhere, maybe there's a Zen center in Nome, Alaska, I don't know. They live in, in, in the Antarctic, you know, or somewhere where they can't uh, get a, a real in-person Zen teaching, and okay, well, that's good for them. But I know for a fact that a lot of people who are coming into these electronic things, they, they could be going somewhere else. They just prefer the, the, the famous teacher that they get electronically to, to the less famous and less flashy and less, you know, uh, attractive sort of teacher that they can get in their local community. And that's a shame because the person you could get in your local community is definitely better for you if there is one than anybody you could get electronically, even even me, you know, or even some famous person who's written books, you know, or or anything like that. The the person you're gonna find in your local community, if there is one, is better for you. And that is a lesson that I learned in my life and I'm passing it on to you. Okay, there you go. That's my opinion on Electronic Zen. As I always say, you can donate to me via PayPal and Patreon. The links are below. I know everybody's hurting financially these days, so don't feel bad if you can't contribute that's that's fine so far so good you know i hope we can get back on track with the economy to the before all my contributions dry up but but so far it's all right so far i'm doing okay so don't worry about me uh we'll see you next time have a good time all the time bye